You've probably noticed by now that Stardew Valley 1.6 is massive. Concerned Ape really went above and beyond for this. And he actually had the help of at least one other dev, Flash Shifter, the developer behind the incredibly popular Stardew Valley Expanded mod, which definitely explains why things have gotten so magical around the valley. I'm not exaggerating when I say that Stardew Valley is basically an entirely new game now. Like, I used to know basically everything there was to know about Stardew Valley, and now... I know nothing. If you're anything like me and you want to know what you're getting yourself into for this update, I thought it would be a good idea to do a bit of a patch notes deep dive. These patch notes on the wiki are still being updated as we speak. As players discover new things, new wiki pages become available. So without any further ado, let's run through these patch notes so you know what to look for when you're playing a new or old save in Stardew Valley 1.6. Alright, so allow me to read through these patch notes for you guys because this is quite frankly a lot to read through and I would honestly rather have someone read it to me as well, so... I'm here to do the dirty work for you. Now there is already a 1.16 version out with some bug fixes. We'll go over that a bit later. First, let's go over the major stuff in 1.6. Starting off, we have new content and features. We have new added festivals and events. There is a desert festival. It's a three-day event in spring, which can be accessed after the bus is repaired. Two mini fishing festivals, annual trout derby and squid fest, an environmental event in summer. I'm not gonna go too much into these festivals. I will save that for another video. We have a new mastery system accessed via a new area which grants powerful perks and items. This mastery system has to do with the skill expansions and you access it in the southwest area of Cindersap Forest if you have all of your skills to max level. It's kind of near where you find Robin's lost axe if you're looking for it. We know now we have a new farm type, the Meadowlands Farm. It has a chewy blue grass that animals love and you also start with a coop and two chickens. Added many new NPC dialogues. This we kind of knew about before the update. You can go ahead and pause to read these if you would like. You can now get multiple pets after getting max hearts with your starter pet. I'm pretty sure you get this through another pet bowl with Robin. And then Marnie also sells a cat tower and dog houses and stuff like that. So I'm not sure if that might have something to do with it. Added a world map for Ginger Island, visible when visiting the island. The world map now shows your actual position within the world in real time, instead of showing you at a fixed location. Pets that love you will sometimes give you gifts. NPCs now have winter outfits. Festivals now have map and dialogue changes every second year, except the night market and desert festival. These next couple ones are for Joja runs. We now have an added golden Joja parrot, which you can pay to find all of the remaining golden walnuts on Ginger Island. Added perfection waivers, a new Jojo way to bypass perfection challenges. You guys, you, we can literally pay to win with Joja. That's insane. Added a prize machine in Lewis's house. You can collect prize tickets as a reward for completing quests and special orders. And from repeated egg slash ice festival wins. A bookseller now comes to town twice a season. And fun fact, the bookseller is the same guy from Harvey's, I think, 10 heart cutscene. Yeah. So the shopkeeper Marcelo is the hot air balloon pilot from Harvey's 10 heart event, which is super interesting. We added mystery boxes. These are the little mystery boxes that we saw in the graphic before 1.6 came out. These mystery boxes are dropped by Mr. Key and the player will see the cutscene with Mr. Key and will be informed by a pop-up that they are finally unlocked. Added a big tree with a quest line, which ultimately gives you some new neighbors. This is where the raccoon comes into play that we saw in one of the graphics concerned they posted. Some theorizing that we were getting a prairie island with raccoons but it is just this this big tree which is fine by me added four new crops we have carrots summer squash broccoli and powder melon which cannot be purchased at the store and there's also two new giant crops we know that one of the new giant crops is a key crop i don't think we are aware yet of the other giant crop added four new home renovations a dining room attic expanded corner room and cubby all right now let's get into the new items that we have in this update we have a big chest let's see here it stores twice as much as a regular chest this one we saw before 1.6 came out and you get this recipe from robin we have a dehydrator you place five pieces of fruit or edible mushrooms inside to dry them when you drop five pieces of fruit you make raisins which is said to be the junimo's favorite food raisins wow we have a new mushroom log this grows mushrooms every so often the more wild trees are nearby the better it works that's interesting this is equipment it just looks like a log that spawns on its own. We have a bait maker which can produce fish specific baits. 
That's what this little machine is that we saw in the graphic before. A heavy furnace, which can process more bars at a time and yield bonus bars. A fish smoker, which produces smoked fish, doubling the value of the fish. You get one by default when starting a new Riverlands farm. We have new text signs, which can be written on. An anvil, which allows you to re-roll trinkets. Mini forge, which acts as a dwarvish forge. Don't know what that means. Statue of Blessings, which grants a random blessing each day. I'm wondering if this will allow us to maybe enchant our tools at home. Statue of the Dwarf King, which allows you to select one of two mining buffs for the day. Tent Kits, which allow you to build a tent which can be slept in for one night. This is a game changer, my friends. Tent kit. Use this to deploy a one-time use tent for sleeping. Can only be used outdoors. This is going to change the game for speedrunners, for, for everything. This is crazy. You get it at level eight foraging. Treasure totems, which spawn a ring of diggable spots. Mystic seeds, which grow a unique tree, which can be tapped. Mystic syrup, a valuable tapper product. Deluxe bait, gets fish biting faster than regular bait. Challenge bait, which allows for up to three fish to be caught at once, but loses one each time a fish leaves the bobber bar. That sounds hard. Deluxe worm bin, which upgrades the regular worm bin to produce deluxe baits. 19 unique books of power, which grant special perks, which I will be doing sort of a deeper dive video on on books a little later because there are quite frankly a lot of them and I don't have time to do that in this video but we will do that in another one. We have new skill books which grant experience in a skill, book of stars which grants experience in all skills, moss a new resource type which grows on old trees, mixed flower seeds. I think this might have something to do with the meadow farm but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't seen any mixed flower seeds as of right now. We have a sonar bobber which shows the fish on your line before you catch it. That's super cool. So that way you won't have to guess if you should catch a fish or not. We have new raisins which have a special use as we know this is for the Junimos. Sea jelly, river jelly, and cave jelly, a new item that you can fish. These are used to make the smoker for the fish that you can buy from Willy. Seven trinkets which grant powers related to combat. Okay so this is what it was talking about how you can re-roll some trinkets. Red, purple, and green fireworks. Star drop tea, which makes an excellent gift for anyone. A new universally loved gift. 25 new hats, 280 new furnitures, new unique furniture catalogs, which contain themed furniture sets. So far I've heard about there is a trash catalog, a wizard catalog, and so much more. And I'm so excited to find all of them. I need that wizard catalog immediately. 41 new floor types, 24 new wallpaper styles, golden animal crackers, whatever that means, <laughs> mannequins which can be dressed, spouse portraits which can be purchased after reaching 14 hearts, butterfly powder which allows you to remove pets, not euthanasia coming to Stardew Valley, blue grass starter, moss soup, secret items, added a new goby fish. Here's what he looks like. He can be found in spring, summer, and fall, any any weather. Some types of gobies can climb up waterfalls, so I'm assuming you catch him near waterfalls? Yeah, can be caught in waterfalls during spring, summer, and fall. Added some new remix bundles. You can now place hats on cats and dogs. You can now upgrade the copper pan into steel, gold, and iridium pans. You can now enchant pans with archaeologist, generous, fisher, and reaching. Added a special items and powers tab to replace the wall Wallet. The wallet area now tracks a selection of progress markers. Added an animals tab that shows all your pets and animals. It shows things like your heart levels and if you've pet them for the day. You can now build pet bowls in Robin's shop menu with three variants. The farmhouse and pet bowl can now be moved through Robin's shop menu. The farm computer can now be used anywhere to see a summary of that location instead of only on your farm. The mini jukebox can now be used on the ginger island farm. Added a new interaction with your horse. Added a new side tunnel to the quarry mine. The community center fish tank now becomes an actual fish tank when you complete it. Added more secrets and easter eggs. That's the thing about these patch notes is that we aren't even seeing everything in here. Like there is still more, which is crazy. Added two new cat and dog breeds, added turtle pets, added eight new achievements, four new cabin variants, a few more accessory options in character creation, a new bobber machine in Willy's shop with 39 bobber styles to choose from, new styles unlocked by catching new kinds of fish, added a cameo appearance to Maru's 14 heart event. I'm super interested about this one. We're definitely going to be romancing Maru on our new farm that we started live streaming. Emily has a new rare socialized daily quest if you 
you've completed the introduction quest. You can now add anchors, treasure chests, and pearls to fish tanks. Pierre now sells a few random items at the Winter Star booth at a markup, added a jingling sound when running with the cinder clown shoes on. Baby Toss now has a chance to crit, which I'm assuming just means you throw the baby higher. I'm gonna break our baby's skull open, hit it on the ceiling. Added a skull cavern statue that can be used to toggle hard mode in the skull cave after completing Key's challenge. Added additional chests to skull cavern levels 200 and 300. Added unique skull cavern chest appearance for levels 100, 200, and 300 chests. Added a new high note C5 to the flute block. Added iridium golems to wilderness farms. We have some visual improvements around the valley. As you may have seen, we have waterfalls, more holiday decorations in winter, more paths stones to various maps, jack-o'-lanterns after the Stardew Valley Festival Fair in fall, seasonal world map variants, a new rare ambient critter. I actually had two people in my live stream chat say that they saw a possum, which I have not seen yet, but apparently it's a little bit frightening and shocking, so beware. Added some rare summer butterfly variants, added an uncommon little brown bird variant, redrew the world map to better match the in-game locations and be more detailed, boat journey textures are now seasonal and reflect the latest valley map. The bus stop now has a wider map, though the distance to traverse it is the same. This is to prevent the black bars that used to appear on the side of the screen. That's cool. Jelly, pickles, wines, and juices are now colored based on the ingredient item. Many town trees are now actual tree objects, but you cannot cut them down. I think this was made because of the the moss update. I think you might be able to cut moss off of those trees. That is just a guess though, so take it with a grain of salt. Slight adjustment to the way items pop out when dug from the ground. Updated volcano gold ore node sprites. Some trees have a chance to lose their leaves in the fall. Riverbanks and lake shores in the mountain, town, and the forest areas are now less jagged in some places. Graphical improvements to building interiors. Improved the art of George and Evelyn's roof. If you destroy a mines chest, it now shows some graphical debris added special backplates to fortune teller tv to show if you get a perfectly good or perfectly bad luck day we have some various lighting changes it now gets darker an hour earlier in winter night tiles like town lamps now activate an hour earlier in all seasons indoor daytime lighting now smoothly transitions to night lighting over the course of two hours night lighting in non-farmhouse indoor locations is now slightly darker farmhouse lighting on rainy days is now slightly moody and lights stay on all day tv Trees and trees of the winter star now give off light at night. Added light sources to window light glows so there are no more dark but lit windows. Made some improvements to the intro bus drive cutscene. At night, hats are now drawn at the nighttime color in the game menu portraits. Removed lighting quality option. It's now permanently set to ultra quality. The submerged fishing bobber is now recolored automatically to match the water. And we have a few multiplayer changes. You can now have up to eight players on a PC farm. Many improvements for multiplayer performance and stability, including Steam players will now use Steam multiplayer authentication, potentially improving connection issues significantly. Large multiplayer packets are now compressed, reducing bandwidth usage and latency. Internal optimizations to data syncing, whatever that means. You now need the same build number in addition to version to join a multiplayer server. This prevents crashes due to game changes between builds. Accepting a key challenge that increases mine difficulty now only kicks other players out of the affected mine type, not all of the mines. Purple shorts no longer show a chat message when placed into the luau soup. Jump down mine shaft sound now plays for all players in the level rather than just the jumper. Some balance changes include added a box with three tent kits to the ginger island jungle. jungle. Weapons found in the wild now have a chance to come with basic innate enchantment. You can re-roll innate enchantments if the weapon could have one at the forge using a dragon tooth. That's super interesting. I think in the past, there was only one sword that came with an sort of like an innate enchantment. It was the vampiric enchantment on, I don't even remember which sword it was, but I remember finding that sword at one point, but now I guess more can have innate enchantments. Slime hutches are now significantly smaller from 11 by 6 to 7 by 4. Wow. Thank God, slime hutches were huge for no reason. Farm animals now gain a little bit of happiness if you close the door behind them at night, but be careful not to lock any of your animals out at night because there is a chance that they might get attacked by wolves. So just make sure they're all inside of your cooper barn. Grass now survives in the winter, though it won't spread. However, cutting grass during winter is much less effective. So I'm assuming you'll get less hay from that. The mushroom cave now comes with a free dehydrator. Oh, that is a game 
changer for the mushroom cave. Are you kidding? Just did the fruit bat girlies get nothing? Changed recipe skill requirements for the charcoal kiln, cookout kit, survival burger, tapper, and worm bin. So the charcoal kiln was moved from forging level four to two. The cookout kit was moved from nine to three. Survival burger was moved from two to eight. Tapper moved from three to four. Worm bin from eight to four. Wow, I didn't even notice that. That's really interesting. Some price changes. This, this one hurts a little. Most home renovations now cost money, which is refunded if you undo the renovation. Reduced fairy dust sell price from 500 to 300. Tea saplings, my friends, have been nerfed from 500 cut in half to 250. Reduced life elixir cell price from 500 to 250. Building cabins no longer require materials, only the $100 price. Raised price of second house upgrade from 50,000 G to 65,000 G, but reduced the number of hardwood needed from 150 to 100. Reduced worm bins hardwood needed from 25 to 15. Increased cost of warp totem farm in casino from 500 to 1000. This one hurts. This one hurts the most for me. Raised price of bombs and dwarf shop. Pain. Raise some hat prices from the hat mouse. Inflation has really hit the valley hard. Shop changes. Put limits on some casino stock. You can now buy all brazier recipes in Robin's shop at once instead of in sequence. Item drop changes. Chopping down a fruit tree now yields the appropriate fruit sapling. If the tree is mature, i.e. the fruit quality is greater than basic, it will yield a sapling with the same quality fruit. The higher the quality, the faster the sapling will mature. So now it's a little less devastating if you have to cut down a fruit tree because you won't have to wait as long for it to grow back. Chopping down a tea bush now gives back a tea sapling. There's now a small chance to find cosmetic items and other goodies while doing random tasks. Snake vertebrae are now easier to get on Ginger Island. Train cars which carry wood can now drop hardwood. Cool. Santa's train car can now drop gifts. No way! Oh, that's so cool. Really wonder what is inside of those gifts. Reduced prismatic shard drop rate from iridium nodes. Reduced, wow, from 4% to 3.5%. Rare yellow slimes now drop money. Brown slimes now drop wood. Botanist perk now applies to items dropped from trees, e.g. coconuts. Reduced chance of fishing void mayonnaise at the witch's swamp. Reduced chance. Interesting. Gift taste changes. Adjusted gift taste for several NPCs. Treasure chests are now a universally liked gift, except by Linus. Skill XP changes. Mushroom logs and mushroom boxes now grant five foraging experience on harvest. Harvesting berry bushes now grants one foraging experience per berry. Harvesting forage crops from wild seeds now give much less foraging experience, but grant some farming experience, but it's one third of normal value. This excludes slime hutch slimes. Adjusted combat. Extended the area of effect of downward facing melee attacks and slightly extended the side attack of daggers. Topaz ring now gives plus one defense rather than the unused precision stat. Raised insect heads damage from 10 to 20 to 20 to 30. Raised cudgels critical attack power cudgel is that one of the swords or something from plus four to plus 50 that's a big difference bombs now affect terrain features like trees and crops within the round of explosion radius rather than a square area slightly increased rate at which skeletons throw bones or shoot spells oh my god the skeletons are more feisty no all right up next we have some junimo cart adjustments added grace jumps into junimo cart when you run off the track you could still jump for a short time to recover your score is now saved if the mini game forcibly exits while playing endless mode noxious gas emitting mushrooms no longer appear in pairs. Reduced bubble spawn rate on whale level. We read this before, worm bins now need a lower fishing level from level 8 to level 4 and produce more bait from 2 to 5 to 4 to 5. Loom now has a higher chance of double cloth when processing quality wool. I think that that's a that's a good addition that makes up for us losing the yellow couch exploit. Fish ponds now have a chance to produce extra row when they produce row. Geode crushers no longer require coal to operate. Whoa, that's big. That's gonna save a lot of coal and make geode crushers a lot more useful. Adjusted penalties when knocked unconscious. You can no longer lose the golden scythe, infinity weapons, or tools when dying. You can no longer lose more than three items. That's big. The amount of money lost now scales to how much you have. It's now less punishing if you don't have much money, but more punishing if you have a lot. This raises the maximum loss from 5,000 
to 15,000 gold. Damn. Adjusted food buffs. Jojo Cola now gives a very short speed buff. Green tea now gives 0.5 speed. Mine and dungeon changes. Added coal nodes to the volcano dungeon. Barrels now spawn on skull cavern levels divisible by five. Reduce the maximum possible effect a bad luck day can have on finding a prismatic slime. Reduce number of bugs to kill for monster slayer goal from 125 to 80. Some bundle changes. Made remix specialty fish bundle reward five dish of the sea to make it consistent with the classic bundle. Riverfish bundle now gives deluxe bait, improves some community center rewards, adjusted crafting recipes. Speed grow now requires five moss instead of one clam. Deluxe speed grow now requires five bone fragments instead of one coral. Quality fertilizer now requires four sap instead of two, but produces two per craft and still only requires one fish. Spouse changes. Spouses now have a seven day honeymoon period after marriage, which prevents them from laying in bed all day due to being upset. Kissing your spouse and giving them a gift on the previous day, each reduce the minimum heart level threshold for a bedridden day by one heart. Friendship gain is reduced by 33% for spouses. Rebalance the crop fairy event. The chance no longer depends on the number of planted crops. It can no longer happen on the last day of the season and it can no longer choose dead crops to grow. Increase the shaving enchantments effect on giant crops. This we knew about before the update. The mushroom cave now provides mushroom every second day and it was unintentionally changed to daily in Stardew Valley 1.5. You can no longer plant trees in the beach farm tunnel. Randomization no longer produces simple repeating patterns in many cases like clay farming. Spreading weeds can no longer destroy artifact spots. Increase the number of monsters that daily monster quests will ask you to slay in some cases. Added more custom quantities. For example, dust sprites will ask for 10 to 20 kills. Tilled dirt on the island farm now decays in the same way as the regular farm. Slightly increased time you have to push against farm animals before passing through them. Increased time? That's strange. Slightly boosted quarry output. Daily quarry output now increases each year up to a limit. Interesting. So the quarry will spawn more each year. That's what it looks like. You can no longer plant trees in town. Secret notes are no longer created during festivals, except passive festivals like the night market and desert festival. Adjusted fish variety and ice fishing festival. And we have a lot of quality of life changes. This one just says performance improvements. So hell yeah. NPCs now shove chest out of their way instead of destroying them. If Pam won't be coming to the bus for any reason, she now leaves a sign informing you you can drive yourself to the desert. Just let me do that every day. Like, I don't want to wait for Pam every day. Audio changes. Made more sounds positional. Positional sounds now fade with distance when off screen instead of cutting off abruptly. Soften the bomb fuse sound. The music now ducks out and then resumes when certain sounds are played instead of stopping. You can now strafe while charging a watering can or hoe. Allow Allowing you to reposition your tool area without changing your facing direction. You can now refill slingshot ammo by right clicking it with the same ammo. Planting cactus seeds on the farm now fails with a message instead of the seeds dying overnight. Holding a tea sapling or seed over a garden pot now shows the green red placement tile. You can no longer pick up rugs if there's something on it. Checking a pet bowl will now show a text bubble with the pet's name. Added a new post fishing sparkling text to indicate when you've caught something for the first time. Torches can now be placed on sprinklers. Interesting. You can now sit in chairs during festivals. You can now move filled chests by hitting them twice with a heavy tool. These chests will shift one space at a time. You can now place flooring underneath most buildings. Cool. Crystallariums now have to be removed and replaced before a different gem can be put inside to help avoiding wasting gems accidentally. Nice. Daily billboard quests now have a more informative tracker notifications when you make progress on them. I did notice that in uh, our first live stream of 1.6. I had a sardine quest I had to catch three sardines and as I was catching them it popped up in the corner like one of three sardines caught. It was really cool. Added a small check mark icon on special orders you've completed before, only on town special orders board. You can now skip the pet adoption scene, which causes you to adopt the pet. Reduce the amount of time you need to push against a pet before they start shaking and let you pass through them. From 1.5 to 0.75 seconds. Reduce time for mini obelisk warp. 750 milliseconds faster. Male farmers are no longer forced into wedding clothes on their wedding day. You can choose your own outfit for the the wedding. I had no idea that that was a thing. Emptying a fish pond with fish still in it will cause the remaining fish to flop out of the pond. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> slime hutch changes. You can now change the flooring of the slime hutch. You can now remove the starter incubator in the slime hutch. Slime balls no longer appear on crafted flooring. Some UI improvements. Added an hourglass cursor shown when you're waiting for something to load on the title screen. Notification messages in the bottom left corner now last 50% longer before going away. Sound in the night events now show an icon on screen to indicate that a sound is playing. That's cool. Dialogue question selectors no longer remain selected when you hover away from them to reduce accidental selections. Robin's building menu now shows how many days a building will take. If an item menu exits while you're holding an item, it is now always retrieved. Marnie's animal shop now centers the camera on an appropriate building when purchasing an animal. That's a nice improvement. Marnie's animal shop now shows prices in the tooltip. The achievement menu now lists all potential achievements. Hidden achievements you haven't unlocked are shown as question marks. The museum reward menu now prevents picking up a reward that won't fit in your inventory. The museum reward menu now lets you exit while holding a reward. The save creation farm selector now has two columns instead of one. The shipping menu category pages no longer take up the whole screen. Inventory tooltips for food that gives a buff now shows the buff duration in the tooltip. The map now closes when you press the map button again. Exiting the Junimo note menu from within the game menu now returns to where you were in the game menu rather than the exit menu. Shops now truncate item names which could overflow the menu width. Shops now have a slight delay before you can buy or sell items to avoid double clicks. Deleting a save on PC is now much faster. Significantly reduced save loading time when there are many custom locations. If a default farm building like the greenhouse is somehow removed, it'll be rebuilt the next time you load the save. Menu background is now a drop down option, which includes standard graphical or none. Attempting to put something in a machine but failing will no longer cause you to try and consume or activate the object while you're attempting to put something in a machine but failing will no longer cause you to try and consume or activate the object you're holding. Ken intro event and Robin flute block event are now skippable. You can now shift right click an item in the toolbar to throw it out of your inventory if possible. You can now press the Y or N key to confirm or cancel the Leap Festival confirmation box. Holding left shift, left control, plus one when buying a shop from an item, will attempt to buy a stack of 999. Wow. Some other changes include, Adventurer's Guild now stays open till 2 a.m., though the music will not play after midnight. Gender-specific clothing variants can now be worn by any gender. If you have 12 hearts or more with your spouse, the chance they'll say a neutral dialogue in the afternoon, which can sometimes come across as negative, is significantly lower, from a 25% chance to a 5% chance. Wow. Penny's Forest Picnic event and Leah forest picnic event now only happens if it's sunny. NPCs now try to avoid walking through trees and other terrain features. Cabins have been combined into one entry in Robin's menu. Replace pet icons on the inventory tab with the current date. The organize button now sorts items in a more intelligent way. You can now drink mayonnaise and jelly and eat pickles. Some more colored objects now count as their color for key quest and die menu. Clam is now considered a fish just like all the other shellfish. Added more descriptive titles to daily quests, added Cyrillic sprite text and some translated word pixel art text, adjusted the date time money box in Chinese, the about page now shows the build number, skull caves now have a chance to also play music from the upper mines, changed parrot flap sound to be different from bat flaps, pans now have a chance to yield bone fragments, made the character randomization a little less random, and added some of the newer hairstyles and accessories to the mix. Pans no longer yield the same thing if you pan in the same spot twice a day. The about page no longer hides the version if a tip message is shown. The order that you'll get forge enchantments is now unique per player rather than per farm. The ginger island shrine item pedestals are now normal items. Modded players can spawn them to display items decoratively, though they're not obtainable in vanilla currently. Map no longer closes if you click on an area of interest. Fix some NPC schedules that weren't previously applied. Lewis visiting the library on winter Sundays. Maru and Penny hanging out on summer Sundays. Maru tinkering on summer Mondays. After reaching six hearts with some NPCs, they won't visit their rival love interest anymore. This affects Alex visiting Haley, Elliot visiting Leah, and Haley visiting Alex. And the rest of the fixes in these patch notes are kind of just sort of mundane bug fixes. And I'd rather not absolutely bore you guys to death. <laughs> so let me know if you'd like to kind of read more of these bug fixes in another video, but I think we'll save that for another time or I'll just leave the patch notes in the description 
description and if you want to read all these bug fixes you can read them for yourself. I will be going more in depth on specific things in future videos as we get more information and whatnot so please let me know in the comments what you want to know more about and maybe I'll make a video about it. But yeah I cannot believe just the sheer amount of content we got in this update. Not only for free but Stardew Valley is literally on sale right now. New players are being charged less for more content and that is wild to me and i think big game studios need to take several notes from concerned apes book because this is unbelievable like bless this man we do not deserve him and we must protect him at all costs anyways yeah let me know what you guys want to know more about and i will see you in future streams and or the next video bye <laughs>